pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Okay. Everything okay on the agenda, guys? Yes. Uh, move to approve the agenda. Second. With no further discussion, I assume. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Agenda is approved. And then, have you looked over the minutes and the claims? I know I have. Yes, I have. No problems. I will second that. Okay. And uh, with no further discussion, all in favor, aye. Aye. Opposed? And I did say aye also. Okay, do we have the county attorney on the line? I'm here, yes. Hi, Mark. Do you have anything for us today? Um, just kind of a general uh, answer to a couple of email questions I received. Um, if you guys receive questions and you don't want to talk to the person, you are under no legal obligation to talk to anyone. If someone doesn't like it, their uh, remedy is to campaign against you and not get you elected the next time you run. But legally, you're under no obligation to talk to anyone. You're under no obligation to answer questions. But you are under an obligation if they request a specific document to provide you with a, them with a copy of that document. For example, if someone says, I want the document that shows all revenue and income received by the county in 2019. You, you don't have to respond to that. You could say, tell me the specific document that you want. Uh, in other words, uh, they have to request a copy of the budget or they have to request a copy of something. Iowa is not a freedom of information state. Iowa is an open records state, which means you need to provide copies of specific documents, but you do not need to direct them to what document they need to request. So legally, you're under no obligation to talk to anyone, you're under no obligation to answer questions, but you are under an obligation to provide specific documents that they identify. Okay, I, I appreciate knowing that. I know we always try to answer anything we're, we're asked, but um, sometimes if you feel like you're just repeating the same thing over and over, it, it, it's discouraging and you don't really have another answer because you've already given your answer. So um, I appreciate knowing that. Well, and okay. um, uh, Barb received a, a letter from uh, Jerry Phillips. Uh, first of all, he thanked uh, you, Mark, for uh, having the article in the paper a couple of weeks ago on uh, Urban Renewal TIF. But then he also had um, uh, a misunderstanding of uh, uh, financing. And uh, we went ahead and, uh, but I thought as long as uh, uh, we're talking about it, that uh, uh, Jerry was wondering how uh, uh, we could borrow money under uh, state uh, uh, laws, and they were different than county laws in that. And I think what he was actually, uh, the problem was, uh, that uh, he didn't understand that uh, under TIF, uh, windmill companies can uh, uh, be taxed as a utility or they can be taxed under uh, property tax. And of course the property tax costs the uh, uh, windmills a lot less money. And I think that's where the confusion was coming in. In any event, uh, uh, we sent them a letter explaining uh, uh, the difference and so on and so forth. Hopefully that uh, corrects that. Yeah, Jerry, if you're listening, just uh, let us know if you have more questions about that. We'll be happy to get back to you. Okay, anything else, Mark? I have nothing else. All right. I think we're, we don't have anything for you offhand either, so thank you. Thank you, Mark. Rich, are you on the line? I'm here by phone today. I'm trying to do a, uh, I'm doing a webinar on traffic control devices right now for the next hour and a half. So I'm trying to do two things at once. So I'll be brief. 
Um, do you hear me? Yes. yes. Okay. Um, <clears throat> getting the advertisement sent out, I sent it to some of the colleges already for the replacement for, a, for an assistant to the engineer, so that's out. And I'll run that ad until we find somebody to fill the position, or at least we'll keep the applications coming in until the position is filled. The ad will run for two weeks in the local paper and then on the bulletin boards in the colleges for I think they've got a longer a longer stretch for uh, advertising. So that's out. Um, I'm going to need to do a program amendment um, probably this week or next week or the following week just to change. There's one project in there that we had in the budget. Um, and it was programmed with like a 50% bridge funding and 50% local, but since then it's been changed to 100% um, bridge funding. So I'm going to change, we'll have to change that in the program. That's about the only thing that needs to be changed. I think we can do that by resolution versus having some big pro. The, the budget's more of an issue for notifications in the program, is, so we'll have that. And then the only other thing is, is the rock run. We've got the northeast corner of rock put down, so they're working their way around. Dyne's quarry is empty of rock, so they're moving to the other locations on the east side, and then they're crushing and some of the other new quarries or that, uh, that Kapsinski quarry in the south. So Rock Run's moving. They're not working today. They've got some other things going on, but they'll be back at it here this week. So um, I can't think of anything else that I need to present to you guys unless you guys have some questions for me. Uh, I want to remind you about harassment training. Um, I, I checked since Heartland uh, Insurance, we're going to be talking with them today, so I wanted to see where we stood on that. And you've got a few that, that need to do it yet, and uh, give, give Melissa a teasing bad time for me. She's supposed to be set an example, and she hasn't done hers yet. And, oh. uh, and then we've got a few from conservation. Um, I believe the courthouse is done, and I believe the sheriff's department is done. So. We, we, we just have a few people left to get taken care of. Is that an online, is that an online thing? Yeah, and, and Melissa should have, have the information. If she doesn't, you let me know. Um, All right. I, I did mine online. It really, it really wasn't hard uh, at all. Sure. Um, just takes a little time. Okay. Yes, because that's got to be done definitely before July. Okay. All righty. Thank you. I'll follow up on that. Okay. Anything else? Yeah. In the claims, there was Rodness Brothers for $161,000. Uh, was that a box culvert? Yep. Where, where did yeah. we stick that at? Wanna... Pardon me? Where did we stick that at? That's that one in the southwest corner. It was let last fall on 320th just west of Baltimore. Well, basically, again, uh, uh, rail cars don't work? This is the same project you've asked me about three times now. It's, okay. It's the state funding, the federal bridge funding that it's basically it's federal comes bridge. out of Because right. <clears throat> well, I thought that was local funding. I mean, I'm sorry. Okay. No, no, I just wanted to clarify it because I know the, the project was let so long ago that it kind of, it had to go through the winter without getting done. So that's what that one is. Yep. All right. So, yep, that's, that's the state funding or the federal bridge funding. Okay, thank you, Rich. And, uh, and then we, we've, we've already talked to the, uh, the fair board this morning already. So that's being taken care of. Yep. Okay. Very good. I'm going to get off and get on my other webinar if you guys don't have any other questions. Nope. Thank you. All right. Thank you. Okay. It's a little early for Heartland yet. So, are they actually coming here? No. She's it gonna is going to be. Maybe okay. she's online and ready to go. Okay. Uh, Judy uh, and maybe Chuck, are you guys online that you'd write, like to get started? We can pass our next one. Okay, we'll just go on to credit card policy. Um, you guys, uh, did you I'm get here? Judy's here. Oh, hi, Judy. Did you want to go ahead and get started? Whenever you're ready, I'm ready. Yeah, we can. Yeah, we can uh, move our next one back just a little, no problem. Um, I can. I can wait. No, 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 we're 
good because nobody, it's not like anybody here is waiting for it. Yes, let's get it over. Yes, here. and you are waiting, so let's let's do you. So you gave us some, some packets. Where would you like us to start looking? Well, let's start. We've got a cover letter there to you, Barb. Mm -hmm. You have that in front of you? Yes. Okay. So that cover letter is similar to what I provide to you every year. Just reminds you that what we're going to go through today is a pretty good estimate. But if you've got exposure changes, like the different cars or property changes between now and May 31st, uh, the estimates will change a little bit. But I, I don't expect a lot of changes between now and May 31st. But if there is, then you'll see a change in your invoicing. Uh, but as in several years past, the pool decided to allow premium credits again this year. And Mitchell County's share of that premium credit is $27,183. So that comes off just the bottom line of what you owe. This year, the trustees voted to allocate out $350,000. And the way we figure this is we take all of the premium you've paid 1987 and then we net that against all of the claims that have been paid on your behalf. On your behalf. And then that allows us to figure out every one portion of the surplus. And then in addition to the premium credit for the county, there is also premium credit for your special acceptances. So that's your early childhood Iowa, 911, emergency management, and then the landfill. And we add those all together and that's $3,078. So there, um, that will you know, take their bill down by that amount. Anybody have any questions about that so far? Uh, no. When, when you come to um, the the property schedule, uh, we did think of a couple things to ask about. Okay. Okay. Good. Good. Well, a couple things that you're not going to see on your billing as we go through your renewal comparison. Uh, the market right now for reinsurance is hardening quite a bit. We haven't seen this kind of market since probably the early 2000s. So we knew in January when we were putting the budget together for the pool that we were going to see about a 30% increase in the property premium. And that's what we got. Um, we've had quite a few. We've had in the last eight years two different fires, three different windstorms, then two different hailstorms. So the uh, property reinsurer has paid out a lot of money on our behalf. So we did see a 30% increase in the reinsurance premium. The other increase we saw was an increase on the cyber coverage, which we put in place in 2013. So we've had it for quite a while, but we've seen quite a bit of claims activity this year. So two things happened. Again, we couldn't find any other um, cyber carriers that could come close to our incumbent carrier, one, and then two, the board decided they really wanted to have additional limits there. So by, again, our claims experience, a little bit of hardening of the market, and then the fact that the board wanted to have extra limits on that, um, that increased our premium quite a bit as well. But the beauty of pooling is, and you've been in this pool since 1987, one of the reasons the founding fathers put together this pool was to insulate you as the members from these kind of market fluctuations. So the surplus is in a good place. Um, the board absorbed the increases on the property coverage, and the board absorbed the increases on the cyber coverage. So those didn't get passed down to you. The only rates that change this year are the workers' compensation rates, and those change every year. So that, that's kind of a prelude to looking at your renewal comparison. So if you look at your property insurance, which is the first line there, you had a little bit of increase in your values, which you can see there below. And so you can see your premium went up just a little bit because of the change in a property value there. I think it was addition of the bathrooms in one of the parks, I believe that was. So again, that property, the increase we got from the reinsurer did not get passed on to you as a member. The next um, coverage we've got there is in on Marine. That went up almost 12%. But again, if you look below, your values went up the same amount. So there was some addition of some new equipment. Your equipment coverage.
storage breakdown, which was what we used to call the boiler machinery, went up just a little bit, and that had to do with there was a little bit of increase from that carrier. Errors and emissions is exactly the same. That's uh, some people call it public officials. That's your coverage that speaks mostly to employment practices or things where maybe someone is looking into or complaining about open meetings or open records. That's primarily what that coverage looks to. Judy? Law enforcement, you're down just, yes. Can you explain what Inland Marine is to people that might not be aware? That would be all your equipment. So it would be your tools that are out there in the shop. That also is like a snow plow that's not a truck or your maintainers. Those are considered equipment, so they're um, considered in the marine rather than putting them under the auto. Okay. So there's the big machinery on there that's probably the largest percentage of that. Again, machinery that's unlicensed. If it's licensed like a dump truck is, then it's under auto. And then it would be all the tools that um, aren't covered under the content. Okay, thank you. Okay. Mm -hmm. um, so law enforcement is down just a little bit. You can see you're down a quarter of a body. And if you remember what we talked about in the past, you've got all your full-time folks, and if you've got a dog, they're all uh, treated as one person. If you've got reserve or part-time people, if they work over 30 hours a month, they're considered as half a person. If they work under 30 hours a month, they're considered as a quarter of a person. So it looks like you're just down a quarter of a person there. <clears throat> and that's why you're seeing a little bit of a decrease on law enforcement. General liability, we've got a chart we'll look at in a little bit, but you can see you're down there about 4%. And in the 17, 18 years, when we went to the averaging of your expenditures, we look at the past six years, and then we drop out the high year and the low year, and then we average the remaining four. And the reason why we do that is we want to keep that premium as stable as possible for you. It also helps the budget better. So when we're working on the budget in January, we know that no one will be over a 5% increase, no matter what's going on in their county, and then it allows us to put together the, the number so that when your auditors are working on their budget, we don't have a surprise later that your expenditures came in higher. So that, uh, to me, works out really well. We've had a lot of counties happy with that because it just takes the guesswork out of what's going on uh, with their budget. Auto liability, these stayed the same. Uh, physical damage changed just a little bit. So you have the same number of vehicles, but you might have gotten a rid of an older one and got a newer one in, and so that changed the values on the auto physical damage. Your current coverage there is not your employee fidelity. That is only coverage for if one of the offices has cash in the office and come on, someone comes in and steals that cash. So I believe oh, that you purchase your employee fidelity or your dishonesty coverage from a local broker. That is correct. Okay, good. Um, workers' compensation, you can see it a big dip there, which is awesome. That's because your mod factor went down by 15 points. And in a few minutes, we'll walk through your workers' compensation calculation for you. Um, but you can see that's an awesome drop for you. Uh, premiums for additional limits, that goes back to several years ago. Mitchell County increased their liability limits from three to four million. And so that gets calculated differently each year depending on the numbers we get from the reinsurer. So that's why that's up some. Special vehicle equipment, that stays the same. You've got eight law enforcement cars. And that's the coverage that covers all of the electronic equipment in those cars. So if one of those cars is totaled for any reason and all that equipment is damaged, you've got full replacement cost coverage for that, uh, for all that electronic equipment. And we knew, we know you might have something that's five years old, um, and then we want you to replace it with the latest technology. So that, that provides you additional coverage there. And then cyber liability, as I explained, um, we saw a big increase in our, if the pool is paying for that premium for two reasons. The experience we've had over the last year with some other counties and then increasing the limit. What the board wanted to do again was absorb those increases so it wasn't passed on to you as the pool. So your calculation there is basically calculating the same thing that was allocated last year and then you're down just a little bit because that gets allocated based upon 50% everyone's the same, and then 50% of 
then the calculation is based on the number of employees. Figure down just, you know, just a few dollars there. So if we look at that total, last year you were at 309712 for your premium. This year you're at 285. So you're down just shy of 8%. You can see your payroll's down just a little bit. And that was, I believe, adjusted because you did get a pretty big refund from your um, workers' compensation uh, payroll last year, and then your mod factor. So we add both of those together, and that's why your drop is as far as it is. And then there in the bottom gray box, we always like to make sure that you've got the opportunity to increase your limits if you'd like. Again, you're at $4 million now. If you want to increase your million, you were increased anywhere from $5 million to $10 million. You can see there that we've got, um, it would cost you another a little bit over $2,300 a year to increase to $5 million, all the way to go up if you wanted to go to $10 million, that's $9,654. Anybody have any questions about any of that? Pretty straightforward, you know, what's the same format we look at every year. And then that next page there just helps for those counties that allocate out premiums. Some counties allocate out the secondary roads or law enforcement or other departments. Some counties don't allocate out at all. And some counties um, allocate it all out down to the dollar to every department. So that just allows Lowell and his department to see, okay, if you do allocate out, how does the premium credit work out for everybody um, for all those parts or excuse me, all the coverages. Now, the next handout there is just going back to the general liability premium that we talked about. just shows you a little history of what's been going on with your premium. And as you can see, uh, in Mitchell County, other than way back in 1314, you can see that you've stayed pretty stable. We have some counties that have had big valleys and big peaks, and that's what we're trying to stay away from. But in your case, the averaging is working really well. And it's just a lot easier to budget if we can uh, know in this January what your premium is going to be, and we, we average it out that way. Just about average. Um, we have some people, their goal is to be at one. We have other counties, whose goal is to be always under one. You can see there's a 10% savings for you there. So you take 143, you modify it by your factor, comes down to $128,000. And then we add the pool discount, and that, don't confuse that with the premium credit, this is something totally separate. So once we add the pool discounts in there, that takes you down to 90555 So what started out as your gross premium, got modified to 128 and then once you run it through the pool discount, you're looking at 90555 now, um, if, before we get into, why don't we talk about the mod analysis, and then we can talk about your schedule. Is that okay, Barb? Sure. Okay. So the mod analysis is that sheet. It starts, you've got a big blue box in the right-hand corner. And it says mod analysis for Mitchell County. So this page there shows your audited payroll for 2016 through 17. And then also shows your audited payroll 2017 to 18. That's down the left hand side. The right hand side shows your losses. And then it will look at a chart that makes it a little bit easier to kind of compare all this. But you can see the 16, 17 year was kind of a tough year for Mitchell County. You had 109,000 losses. Then 17, 18 comes along and it was a very attractive year. You only had 5,600 in losses. And then on the next page, on the 1819 page, you can see your losses went down even more, $2,488. So once we run the payroll for a county through the out, so the payroll amount of the um, assigned code, and then you can see there's an actuarial calculation there, and I don't do that. I put all the data in, and the software package that I buy um, figures that actuarially for you. And you come up with a mod factor of 0 0.90. So that's a lot of numbers to look at. So if you look at the next page, it's a little bit easier to understand. So if you look at the right-hand side where 
those green columns are in the high breakdown, this is, again, your growth premium. It doesn't allow me to put in the net premium. Uh, but your current at 0 0.90, your gross premium is $128,859. If you were at a one mod, which you saw that on your sheet, no modification at all, your premium is 143 less all of those premium discounts. Now, actuarially, your minimum mod, meaning you had no losses in three years at all, you'd be right around a little bit um, shy of $99,000. So if we look at the controllable mod, where you are now versus where you would be if at a minimum, they're saying the controllable mod would cost you about $30,000. But keep in mind, we're going to discount that probably 30%, so we're probably closer talking to about a $20,000 controllable. So to me, the most meaningful chart there is the one below. So if you have it in color, the, the a uh, pedestal on the left is green, and the one on the right is goldenrod. So actual losses are in green. You can see you're 16 to 17. You are expected for the year to have right around 63,000 losses, and you had 104. But then the next two years, you were expected to have about, again, 63,000, but you had less than 10,000. And the same thing with 1819. Expected to have right around 63,000, and you had again less than 10,000. So that's why you're seeing that 10% modification factor to your benefit is because your losses are so much better than what is expected for a county with your classification. And then one thing we always look at when we're talking about this is, well, what's been happening this year? What's been happening through the 1920 year? Well, as of uh, the end of April, you had incurred losses of $13,000. So knock on wood, we know that's premature. Those losses really aren't developed yet because we haven't had them around long enough to know how serious they are. But starting at $13,000 is really attractive. So. Next year, when we calculate this, you're going to lose that big 16, 17 year. You're going to have two awesome years in the 17, 18, 18, 19. And then the year replacing it at this point appears that it's going to be way under the year that you lose. So we're expecting, again, everything goes smoothly in the next month and a half. We don't have any big surprises. Then we're expecting, well, we'll see your mod factor go down even further for next year's renewal. Anybody have any questions about that? Oh, no, it certainly <coughs> sounds better as we go on here. Yes. <laughs> I'm sorry? It sounds better as we go on here. <laughs> and then the next sheet there just gives you a history of where you've been with your mod factors. Way back in 1617, you were at a 0.92. In 1718, you dipped down to 0.84, which is 16% off your premium. Then we had a couple years in 1819 and 1920 where both years were at 1.05, and then now we're down to back to 0.90. So again, um, you know, we'll, we should see this go, go down, provided we don't have any surprises in the rest of the year, or the claims that are incurred don't um, get too much larger. Now, the other, the last four sheets just kind of gives you an idea of what's going on with what kind of claims you're generating out of Mitchell County. So that circle graph there, you're right in line with all the other counties. Work comp is the big driver of your claims count. So you've got 57% of your claims are workers' compensation, auto 22%, GL 16%, and property is 5%. So all of our counties look a lot alike in that, that work comp and auto is what drives it. And what really drives it on the auto is the physical damage because we have so many deer hit every year. Uh, now, the next sheet there is your claims count by department. And if you can see the colors, the yellow is workers' compensation, the blue is auto, the orange is GL, and then the gray is property. And, and keep in mind, this is not quite five years of experience. I'm not 
picking on secondary roads, but they are typically, in all counties, the driver of plan counts because they have that many more people on the road, they have that many more people in their department, and plus they're doing some tough jobs. So typically we're seeing secondary roads and law enforcement are the two drivers of those numbers. But again, not picking on them because they've got the most exposure in that area. Judy, do we compare with other counties as far as how ours looks for road department? Yes, yes, that's pretty close. And I will say this, um, kudos to your sheriff, most of our counties are much higher on the law enforcement side with their auto and their workers' compensation. So if you look at your law enforcement only has four auto claims in almost five years and four workers' compensation claims in almost five years, that's awesome. So I would say, as far as law enforcement goes, you're way below where most of the counties are. Cool. And then the, the orange, which is GL, um, that's usually higher in admin because like the, a slip and fall in the courthouse or a slip and fall on the ice in front of the courthouse, those always go to the admin department. So, you know, that's not a, anything towards local departments or anything like that. That's just where those get coded most of the time. And then the next chart there just shows you on workers' compensation basis your top 10 losses by body part. So you can see there um, the blue is the sum of the claim count. We all you know, have a lot of eye claims, a lot of fingers claims. Again, keep in mind this is almost five years. So your claim counts are a lot lower than most other counties. And Mitchell County has a long history of leading the pack when it comes to the lower workers' compensation losses. So you can see here from a sub total, of, uh, total incurred, we've got an upper arm, which is a shoulder, typically. That uh, costs the most for you. And then the re and then it's just depending how it gets coded, because you can see two boxes over we're listing shoulder separately. So that gets coded depending upon who's filling out the claim notice. And so, you can see there that shoulders, upper arm, are, are your biggest drivers here. The interesting thing is knees are a big deal. For most people, back is a big deal. And look at your numbers there. You're basically showing anything. You've got one claim in each of those areas, and dollar amount is really low. So, again, that's a big, you know, kudos to the Mitchell County for seeing uh, low numbers for disc and for knee. And then the last one there, so the top 10 workers' compensation causes of loss. So strain and slip and fall are always our bigger ones. Um, we've got, you can see all of the uh, descriptions there, but again, the blue is the sum of the claim count. And then the yellow line is the total of amount incurred. And strain over exertion and slip and fall are across the board the highest for all of the counties. And then your last handout there is just the new cyber liability coverage summary. Uh, what is we advise people to make sure that your department heads have a copy of this. And then we always we also your your IT person is in house, correct? Correct. Yes. Yep. I would make sure that your IT person has a copy of this as well. What we can't stress enough is if you think you've had any kind of a breach or you think there's any kind of an issue, even think that it is, but you haven't proven it yet, let me know right away because the sooner we are able to report that claim, then your coverage is triggered. Uh, we've had a couple of situations where the department heads in other counties didn't let Board of Supervisors know right away, and so they lost some days on coverage, and there was then some of that that they had to pay themselves because it's not covered until it's reported. So IT person really needs to understand, even if you think it happened, let us know. And if it comes back that, oh, it wasn't anything, um, we were able to take care of it in-house and it wasn't anything, not a problem. But we would rather report it and have our coverage triggered then not report it and then we lose valuable days on working on the claim or you know getting you coverage for any dollars that you're expending. Judy, um, 
you should be aware our IT person is actually getting deployed. This is his last day. And uh, so we have a, a young gal that's going to help us for the summer, um, okay. uh, uh, Sammy Sharper. And uh, so maybe okay. we'll get you her information in case you have something to send out. It goes directly to her. Okay. So if you guys okay. would take care yeah, of it. Yeah, I would get a copy to even if he's getting deployed, then at least he knows um, when he comes back, he knows all about it. Yeah. And make sure she gets a copy of it. You bet. And then on those questions, questions that people might have about cyber, that is a separate insurance contract that's not under the Heartland contract. So if we've got questions, I always then shoot those questions over to the carrier and have them answer it because. I am not a cyber person, and IT is certainly not my forte. So I always want to make sure um, that we get the questions answered by the people who really know. Sure, that'd be good. Like like a copy of this even to to Sammy too, um, so she has okay. on hand. Yep, yep. It, okay. it would be. And we'll we'll get you her contact sure information. Okay, that'd be good. And then, as far as anything else going on, Judy Hamaker maintains the workers' compensation claim. Um, Dan Field still does all the other lines. Chuck Goodman still involved with loss control. And then, hopefully, we'll have a Heartland meeting in July. I probably shared with you the last few have been electronic. Um, so we know we'll have a July meeting in person or not. We'll find out by then. But then the board will discuss the harassment prevention training and talk a little bit about it if the board wants to do another in-person training with you know, Swanson or they want to move to totally electronic training, um, that'll be up to the board. We'll discuss that in July. I don't know if you were on the line yet, um, Judy, when we talked about um, that we do still have a few in a couple of departments that need to get caught up on the harassment training. Okay. And uh, um, so we're, we're working on that. The Sheriff's Department and the Courthouse are, I believe, completely done. Uh, while I take it back, my fellow supervisors <clears throat> need to get that done. I got mine last night. Did you? Good. Steve, Steve, Steve what, he did a team in person. I was at the class. Oh, you got, oh, okay. They didn't apparently mark you down, so. I was at the class. We'll yeah. make sure it gets taken care of. Okay. Uh, Lin Lin Lindsay hey. sent me some names. Okay. And, uh, so I'll, I'll just update it with her. No problem. That's okay. good. Well, she that's awesome. There too. We do have a couple of counties. No, she was part-time. And they know that, at that time. the auditors so have been really was was part on lots of other stuff. Yeah, we'll get that, try to get that all done, because you wanted it done by July, right? If possible. Again, I know we've got a primary coming up, so that makes the auditor's office. We've got lots of stuff going on, but it'd be great to have it done by July. And then I'll have everybody send in their checkoff sheet so mm -hmm. that I've got documentation here that we've got everybody done with the train. Yeah, so and that, that helps us. Do, doesn't that help us in some way with premiums and stuff too? Um, it helps it because we share that with the reinsurance company. It also helps us if we do happen to get a claim from someone, uh, the office of the uh, folks that investigate those always require that we provide them with our records on what kind of training we did and who was a part of that training. So sure. it's, and, and the fact that we don't want your employees to ever feel like they're being harassed because of whatever their protected characteristic is. So of course. it's not just a record keeping thing, it's let's protect the employees from that kind of behavior. So you bet. So anyway, now that pretty much all I have. I know you had questions about the schedule. Um, Lowell, do you have the authorization to bind form? Yes. You don't have to do that uh, motion today. I just need to have those signed before June 15th. So that's up to you guys how you want to handle that. Is it something we can go ahead and yep. do today? I think we just go ahead and do it. Okay. Well, um, I know Steve had a question on, um, before we do that on the property schedule. Uh, we were curious about okay. the county care facility. Did you want to explain what you were thinking? Uh, Steve? Now I see it says change date on here, 520 of 19. We still have $100,000 on the building, and I think that building's getting, it is going to be tore down, so. Okay. 
is that still an insured why, building? Well, the reason why, I mean, it used to be, I think, a couple million dollars. Um, Stan, you'll remember that better than I will. So but as you moved out, the reason why we left coverage on that is if you had a tornado or something come through, then you'd have coverage for the cleanup cost. But if you're at a point where um, you think that it's, you know, and, and I'm trying to think, you know, that, that was last year. If you're at a point where you were at a point even at the beginning of the year where everything's pretty much torn apart and if a tornado came through, you would just bulldoze it over, um, we can change that. No, we're probably still, uh, there would be that much uh, cleanup cost right now. Yeah. Yeah, we have applied to uh, the DNR for a grant to help with the uh, demolition, the cleanup, uh, but uh, we have not uh, been notified yet. We should be notified here in the next, uh, any, any time between now and the next month, uh, where we stand okay. on that grant. Uh, okay. We could always change it later, but yeah, I agree. We probably better just leave it because we're, yeah. we're finding out cleanup costs alone are very yeah. expensive. Yeah, I just had a question okay. on that, but it, yes, if it's that, that would be a thing. That, that, yeah. Well, yeah, it's it, kind of gone down in, in a step down since the facility closed, and this was the last one that I think you guys decided on last year just so you'd have coverage case. There's a fire or tornado, you have um, coverage for cleanup. Well, as long as it's uh, been mentioned here, our current limit uh, liability is $4 million. Is that uh, correct? Yes. Uh, we had quite a discussion yesterday at uh, NICOG that I'll be talking to uh, the others here uh, shortly after this. But uh, uh, taking a look at uh, Cerro Gordo County, uh, they said there's hardly ever been a, a claim even for $2 million on the liability. And so just to give the other two board members uh, uh, a heads up on that, that uh, uh, basically uh, uh, in this area, uh, North Iowa area, claims normally never even hit the $2 million uh, mark. So uh, just a heads up for us. Well, didn't last year, didn't we raise it? One million wasn't that last year? Or was it? no, it's a couple of years probably. A couple of years ago, okay. Well, I well, wouldn't see any need to raise it any higher. Well, if it was up to me, I'd lower it, but then we, we're at four million, so. Well, you know, and you never know. I, we've got Cedar County in the early years of the pool, so that would precede me. But they had an auto accident, and they're the claim settled for more than what their limits were, and so then they didn't have any coverage over that. You know, the pool didn't cover it, even though the claim was over those limits. So in Cedar County's case, they feel comfortable with $10 million, uh, because they had to levy and get, you know, it took them a couple of years to get that paid off on the amount of claim over the coverage amount. Now, I don't advise everybody to go to $10 million. That's just where Cedar feels comfortable. Um, most of our people probably are in the seven to eight million dollar range, but you know that's a decision you have to make as board where you feel comfortable. I'd say we certainly don't want to lower it. No, but I like Stan feel that we don't have a need to raise it. I don't have a strong feeling on it, so that's fine. Okay, and you didn't have any other questions about that, you guys. No, nope. that resolved the, the only issue that I was curious about. Okay. And I think that, you know, the auditor's office does a real nice job. They send these schedules out a couple of times a year uh, for the department to look at just to make sure that all of their properties are on there and their limits are where they to be. So um, it, it's good that counties are looking at this more than once a year. Well, we need a motion to approve. Right, Lowell? Correct. So moved. Seconded. Okay. Any further discussion? If none, all in favor? Aye. Aye. Including Aye. myself. Opposed? And that is approved then. Thank you, Judy.
Well, thank you. I'm so sorry I'm not there in person, but I don't know about you. I don't know that you want Polk County people hanging around up in your county. Since we've got Probably not. <laughs> yeah, yeah, but I, I hate not seeing everybody. So thank you again yeah, for another year with Heartland, and uh, Heartland appreciates your involvement, and I appreciate your support, and thanks so much for letting me barge in on your meeting today. Thank you, Judy. All right, thanks. We'll talk to you all later. Bye-bye. Okay. We're going to go on to credit card policy. Um, I have a copy for all you guys. You don't, or do you have it? You I have, have it? <laughs> do you have got a copy of it? I didn't okay. bring it. I just, um, I was fine with this. This came from our Renee Von Bokern, and um, I was fine with it, all other than she suggested we might want to think about, and I kind of agree with her, uh, the second paragraph, the maximum credit limit for each department shall not uh, exceed 3,000 unless written jurisdiction by the department has, is approved by the Board of Supervisors. Uh, credit cards shall not carry an annual fee. She was a little nervous with 3000 because if it's getting up that high and someone is doing something maybe not quite kosher, uh, that, that's up quite a ways. And she suggested we might think about changing that to 500 What do you guys think? Shannon, what do you think? I mean, that. Sure, while you're here. Oh, geez. Um, <laughs> you weren't expecting that, were you? Is it per trans? I wasn't. Is it per transaction or what? I haven't seen the policy. That second paragraph. It doesn't say per transaction. No, that would be the total in the departments. Oh, oh I think three thousand is plenty. Five hundred. Well, no, but we're talking about possibly changing. I think five hundred is low too. I mean, that's why. Five hundred is low. I would think like a thousand. If you had, I mean, KC computer. Yeah, I mean, and if, mm -hmm. you, if I order a couple of laptops or desktops, we're probably and we did over a thousand. I did. Right. And you can go to the board if it's over, but I think a right. thousand is plenty. Oh. Honestly, I buy most stuff with my own card and ask for reimbursement just because I don't like messing with the county's card. Mm -hmm. I guess I myself, I didn't initially see a problem with three thousand, but if we want to lower it down to a thousand. I, I would feel more comfortable with it, especially since Renee mentioned it. It's a liability, and like you said, per transaction, that can get out of hand. Really right, fast. if you get up to 3000 So you want have to have well, a motion for this? Well, Stan, when, do you have some discussion here? I mean, every month we're going to uh, see the bill and the claims for the credit cards. And it, well, like, but you're seeing it after the fact. Right. Well, but I mean, again, uh, if somebody wants to abuse it, they're going to abuse it. I mean, I don't care what we have for a limit here. We can say we have uh, uh, this limit and that, but I mean, if somebody's going to be trying to steal from you, uh, uh, you know, it's just kind of like uh, uh, our signs that used to be on the courthouse door here that said uh, no weapons. Well, if somebody wants to bring a weapon in, I mean, uh, the sign isn't going to stop them. <laughs> uh, I'm so, you know, uh, uh, I, I guess I would still feel more comfortable if they, so just to keep us aware of what's going on too, I would, well, I would feel well, comfortable like say, with, we, with the thousand. Every, every month we should be going through the claims, I mean when... Uh, we are, but like Lowell said, that would be after the fact. And I haven't read the policy, but does it say somewhere like purchase orders or something? I mean, I know Lowell has a nightmare when he gets a credit card trying operation. to figure out who paid it. Who but, charged it? Well, we require, yeah, they need to bring, bring a receipt. Receipt. Right. If they don't have a receipt, it's pretty hard to... Right. That is a, certainly a check. But it's hard to figure. If you, they no, don't get a receipt, then you have, you got to go around and ask everybody. Well, yeah, that's a waste of your time. Yeah. 
Well, here on there it says departmental expenses as approved by department heads. Pre-authorization from the Board of Supervisors or elected officials should be obtained for any expenditure over $500. So right there, would, in there. that would catch everything else. That's in another card. Yeah. So, but uh, if we want to lower it down to 1000 and if there is a trouble that shows up over the course, we can always raise it back up. Uh, the uh, IT would be the main department right now. You think what? IT would be the main department right now. The rest of us don't spend over the spend And not everything is purchased under with a credit card either. Right. Well, do you have an opinion on this, Lowell? My opinion. So we can avoid using credit cards? It's not always possible, but I think you should be more of a minimum. And it's best if they direct bill you. That way they're not charging the sales tax. Or it's just easier to track. You know, looking at a credit yeah. card and trying to and it, it, it determine does. something without, if they haven't turned, departments haven't turned it into our office, it's a little hard to figure out who ordered this. Yeah. Some things you can, some you can't. Well, we always get receipts though, right? We're supposed to, but not 100%. Okay, we should probably... I know when I haven't had a receipt, you guys just didn't cover it. Yeah, so, and same, that's only fair. Same thing when you but I think go, it should be with everybody. Go to a meeting. But it's our Yon County's credit card at this point. Yeah. Well, are receipts uh, turned in right away as soon as, uh, I mean, because again, uh, the receipt should be turned in before you ever get the bill from the credit card. It should be. Is that part of the policy here? And it is the department head's responsibility, I know, for a lot of this stuff, too, to keep track of. Well, almost all the time, it's going to be the department heads that are making the purchases. It's not going to be uh, one of their underlings. Right. Usually, I, I guess I don't I mean, really know. About the only time that one of the underlings probably would use a credit card is if you're going to a meeting or, or, uh, uh, yes, that's the only time. You know that type of thing. I think it's good to have this policy. Yes, definitely. Uh. Casey, if we changed it to not exceed a thousand, would you be would that be comfortable for you? Sure, yeah. If anything, I just have to I guess come be approved. Yeah, because it's not that big a deal to mm -hmm. just let us know. What's but I it. like what Shannon said. I would probably put that part about bringing a copy of the receipt, you know, to the auditor's office. Yeah, there's something in here about okay. about receipts somewhere. Yeah, but does it say should they be turned in immediately? That it might not say. It just makes Renee's job a lot easier. Yeah. She has every, every receipt available. And she goes it just says part. timely submission. Yeah, so you have to turn it in once you receive it. Well, we can clarify that a little more in that yeah. sentence somehow. That would be nice because some departments' timely is not the same as other departments. Timely. Yeah, I agree. Especially when we have satellite departments. It's, you know, conservation doesn't. I guess home health and well, Barb, why don't you make those changes and let's, let's put it back on for next week. Okay. Uh, what do you think is timely? Just ASAP or do you want to say within a certain time? As soon as they receive it. Yeah. As soon as they receive it. Because otherwise you leave it on the desk for one day, then it's two days. And oh, I know. I have to do that stuff right away or I'll forget. And I do not see anything in here about a receipt. Okay, um, I'll ask Renee on, on the proper that. wording and, and if you put it down next week and we'll yep. discuss that again. Okay. And Shannon, that's good you're here. We're going to talk about the procedures on reopening the courthouse.
Okay, um, I know we talked about the possibility of maybe opening next week, so I thought I would give you kind of an update on where we are with the safety and what other courthouses are doing. Um, <clears throat> Dave is working on getting those furnace filters changed to the more expensive ones that they're, they're requiring. Um, it sounds like we have masks, we have hand sanitizers, your gloves have, or your shields haven't quite they're made it. They're here? Oh, good. That's what I wondered. I just put them together. Awesome. And they're going to work? Hopefully. Hopefully. <laughs> okay. Some departments or some counties are talking about um, having tests talking back and forth, but I don't see why that wouldn't work. Okay. Either. And then um, I know Dave said gloves he's still waiting for, but I think he's the main one that has to have those. So I'm not as concerned about that. Because um, he's certainly washing his hands and stuff all the time anyway. Yeah, he's for the floor. And um, uh, yes, um, we did talk about that we wanted tape or something showing where people should stand. It looks like Shannon has some sign. There's some signs. Would we just tape these down? I would think. Or laminate. Yeah, I can. I have the laminator. I was gonna say laminate would be better. Yeah. Your tape just is for the spot where people are gonna sit. And yeah. And then there's one way signs too. Okay, excellent, yeah, because that was on here and I'm like, oh, we got to do that yet. Um, and we are going to ask people, we said, to come in masked. Follow CDC protocol. Mm-hmm. And that we talked about taking temps. Now, how are, did we decide how we were going to handle that? Just a sound, a, a list of questions mm -hmm. to ask the questions. questions. Yeah. And then um, I have my thermometer in my office. I know that... Pat has I think that each department yeah, has done all right. So. And so would you guys just handle your own people? You you would just put yep. Yeah. Okay, so that sounds yeah, good. Because I you can't expect somebody to just stand at the door all day. Mm -hmm. Oh yeah. And by applying them only. And so are the, the doors them. locked and we're letting people in or are we just opening the doors and I think you're gonna have a lot of problems if you keep the doors locked and you're asking for People to call in for an appointment, and then they come here and they got to call again. And uh, well, we, were, well, we want them to sit in their car, okay. and we'll call them when they're next up. To come well, in. but we have to let them in. Yeah. Look at how business is operating. I mean, uh, in the last fifty some days, we've had three cases in Mitchell County. Right. Uh, people are really following what they're supposed to be doing. Uh, in any one particular day, I mean, how many people are in cases? Two hundred, three hundred, five hundred people. The same with Quickstar and so on and so forth. They're all intermingling, and yet again, people are not coming down. If we follow the directions, like you say, wear your mask six feet apart and that, this should work for the courthouse just like it does for Casey's or Quickserve or whatever. Uh, My only question is if we say by appointment and then we've got the door open, then what do we do with the people that just come in? I was going to say, yeah, I, 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 think, I, think you have to, I think you have to keep it, keep it locked temporarily. I don't. Um, I don't uh, you're also. You're also going to get bombarded, especially because I did find out you cannot turn away other counties. We were hoping that we could just do our county people. You can't turn away it. I found out by law. For who? For any of you guys. You can't turn away. Like if somebody comes for their license from another county or whatever. That's what I was doing. The DOT is okay with it. I was just told that by a lawyer. As Mark Walk has explained, well, it could be under interpretation. Yeah, under interpretation, maybe. Yes. As well to ask the county attorney. Um, I guess if we're taking appointments, we can ask them the questions we want to ask, and if they're going to be traveling from a prohibited travel county, mm -hmm. we'll have. I mean, they, we've already had people calling from all over, and I just tell them to call. Um, I have the list of every county of when they're opening and what they're doing, what they're do, how they're doing okay. it. Okay. I worked on, Shannon, just the ones surrounding us because that was what would affect you if you got Sir business. Gordo. Yep. Sir Gordo, um, their auditor is open now, and the rest of them are talking the 19th. 18th is what they, we got on the list. Okay. Yeah. Howard County is already open. They were last week. Um, Howard, I didn't have... Um, Floyd are talking maybe June, first part of June, yeah. like the third or something. And the treasurer's not going to open his office. And, and to everyone. now Worth County, I was told, they're open for voting, but the rest of the courthouse uh, would be more like June 3rd. 
Yeah, he does. I don't have anything down for work. Yeah, she that's what I was just told um, last night. Okay. And uh, the courts themselves open June 3rd, is what I was oh. told. I just was told that. Um, and so uh, it's not like the rest of them are open yet. A lot of them are the 18th and, and um, the 6-1 or 6-3. Yeah, I have the 6, yeah, same here. That's the ones I had too. So, but basically, this is a, a department head decision anyway. Um, is what I've been told. So, <laughs> you guys have to do something. Today was here. We could, I mean, you've heard Stan's opinion, you've heard my opinion. Steve, do you have some comments? Well, truthfully, it is Shannon's, the department head's decision. And the auditor. Yeah. Well, he's the department head. Exactly. Well, yeah. I think we start slow and then try it. And we can always revisit. Mm -hmm. Do you that. want to try by appointment next week? Or do you want to wait? I think we're going to do by appointment for a while. Mm -hmm. But but do you want to start that next week? Yes. And yeah. then we need to figure out how to uh, you know the bathrooms. And then. Oh, bathroom. And keeping the drop. Out. We have to keep the drop box out for just for people for comfort. If somebody doesn't want to come in, and that's fine. I think keep we that really drop have box to have out. that option available because people are getting better at using it, and I, we have to open at some point. Yeah. And we'll say that drive through once we get that too. If we ordered the drive through one yet or not? Not yet. Okay, but I know we need to get that order right. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And Adam's graphics and Stacy Bell has plexiglass, so if anybody decides they want shields, they can order them up there. I who, who has that? Adam's, Adam's graphics. They had posted they did Stacy Bell's library one on Facebook, and it's beautiful. They did a good job. So right. I wish I would have known before I ordered mine, because it would have been nice to know. Okay, a Adam's, I, I never heard that either. Adam's graphics and Stacy Bell. Yeah. Okay. He posted that they did a nice one for has uh, the library. They made a plexiglass shield, and then someone made wood. wood. Awesome. Yeah, I have no idea. Cool. So I guess the department heads will have to talk, but I'm I'm ready if we need to do it. I just I need to talk about the driver's license. Uh, DOT said they'll post what whatever we want or whatever we don't want. They'll make it as public as we want it, or we'll just let us do our thing and not make a big deal on the DOT site. So if we want to do soft and not let everyone in the state know that Mitch County is open. I didn't know how our county was open. I had an individual from Riceville who was on Facebook very upset about not getting service. And I reached out to him because I didn't know which side he was on. They've had probably 12 cases. Yeah, case. they've had more than us. Yeah. But they're open. Five point only. Okay. I think that's it. I mean, and we've been sending out forms and trying to keep everybody what they need. I mean, we've I had a stack again this morning. I had a stack like this of license plates. People aren't just cleaning out their house, they're cleaning out their vehicles. So <laughs> people are getting rid of vehicles like crazy. Yeah. So. Well, do you, uh, you guys want to talk among yourselves then? But let us know what you decide so we can well, get it on. We pretty much determined we're going to, by appointment, go ahead start and month. start Monday. Yep. And Monday. Casey already has kind of put some tentatively yep. on the website. So. Yeah, I just posted that. Obviously, working toward a plan and I saw be that. prepared to uh, have your own mask and appointment only. Might as well get that changed then. All the yeah. department yeah. appointment and wearing yeah. their I'll, mask. I'll post them all now. Definitely. Um, they're on the website, but I'll post them with the, or add them to the posting. Definitely. Bring Jessica your own said mask. the travel question isn't a big one anymore. It's more of have you been exposed to this type, this type, this type, this type, because it's community. So she said, the question about traveling is not that big a deal, but she did send us the Excel spreadsheet with the questions. She advised us to have each employee have their own questions that they check every day just to think Okay, about so it, each department count. will have that? Yep, and then each department, that would be the questions you'd ask before you could, before you do the appointment. Okay. And if they answer yes to them, then they'll have to do the drop box. Okay. Well, Shannon, are all your employees now working back here at the courthouse? No, they're work so half of them are working at home. Well... And again, why? Because, I mean, if the courthouse is locked in that, they all should be able to be here at the courthouse. Because we all work together, and it was the protocol advice to split us, so if something were to happen, we didn't have to all sh didn't well, have to shut down our office totally. When do you want us to try to get everybody back next week? or? Uh, at this point, I'm not going to do it until June. Because I have one staff that is at high risk, 
Which you'll be able to handle because and she'll be off it's by the first week. She'll be off the first week of June, so we'll have to all go back together because I can't have one staff and two staff. But I don't want to, um, at this point, expose her to us that she hasn't been exposed okay. to. Okay, and then how do you think the other departments feel? Are they going to try to? We haven't talked. I think yeah. Today we have everybody there. Mm -hmm. This is part of the day. Okay, so it might, be, only, might be only your department. The rest might all be coming back. And I, I, have one, I, have a I mean, I had one phone call, and I won't say who, and I won't say what, but uh, apparently one person that was supposed to be working at home was at a rummage sale. And that, it, you know, I kind of blame us for that, because we should have put in place right away that if they were going to be home, that during working hours, they should not be anywhere else. Well, we we saying, should. We I mean, should I'm have. Saying, I got a phone call. Yeah, already. and I, I think that's one of those live and learn because nobody's ever been through this before. But uh, that's and they can only do so many classes online because the DOT won't let them log into the art system on a virtual. And I'm the only one that has a remote computer that logs into my computer. But we've also been told by the DOT, I'm treasurers that are at home trying to do their work. Where even though I log in and I'm getting on my computer. I'm getting on my own Wi-Fi, and DOT IT said no, because they don't know the security of our home Wi-Fis I and systems. I heard the security So they do not want their art system at risk. Yeah. And we can't send checks home with people to process and stuff. So it's not an easy stand. It's, I mean, it, by 3, 30, 4 o'clock every day, maybe we're done with everything to have only the two of us in the office. It's been crazy. And I come well, in just at night to do stuff. I'm just saying how it's being perceived by the public. Yeah, the, no, I, th I think that if, if they're home, even if, if uh, they've run out of work, that during work hours, they should not be out and about. Maybe now is a good time, or at some point, we kind of know what working remote looks like to add that to the employee handbook. Or yeah. somewhere, because I don't think there's anything. A remote yeah, work we site. need to update that. Because I, I think it's, you know, some somewhat possible if certain circumstances, so. Something that should be if added. you guys have some suggestions of how to word that, and then I'll send it to Renee to see what she thinks. And maybe our, some IT departments would have something. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah sure. let me know, because I do think we need to have that in place for next time around. And it's not like they called in six, Dan. They, they are home because of a department head's decision. Yeah. I says, as, a, as a department head, I don't have a problem if that's what she was doing. I don't have a problem with that, because if she was done with their work, I mean, we go to, I go to our sales on my lunch hour. How do they know she wasn't taking her lunch hour at that time? It's, everybody's going to be upset about it. I've had a lot of people say, oh, you're not working today. And I'm like, well, no, I was doing cash out. And, but I have a remote computer, so it's a little different. So. Mm -hmm. And you'll always have someone that has an opinion about that. So. Yeah. There's different ways of looking at that, but I think to be on the safe side. Probably do that. Yeah, their noon hour is their noon hour. They can do or whatever break they times. want during noon hour. And you're so, right, break time. And I take lunch at 1 32 o'clock, so a lot of people think I'm off running around doing stuff. They don't realize that that's just the way with four people in our office and we all take our lunch and we stay or we don't leave, we don't leave more than one at a time. If somebody starts at 11, it gets to be pretty late. So like 1 32 o'clock is when I take my lunch. Yeah, and, that, and that's how we can defend our staff too. They certainly could be on their lunch break or, you know, whatever. So, yeah. But I also know how the public perceives that. Yeah. yeah. Okay, yeah, if you have some, some suggestions, to send them to me and I'll, I want to get that updated too. Okay. Anything else we want to add with that? Okay. Meetings attended. Great. Thank you, Shannon. Thanks, yes. Shannon. Okay, I had a North, it's now called Northeast Iowa Workforce Area meeting. And uh, I'm going to keep this one short because my heart one one's kind of long. Um, we spent two hours and we only got to page three out of 12. This is with all this new stuff, and it's just so time consuming, and that's just the way it is, and I have extra meetings because of it. It's a, it's a, it's a tricky one to be on right now. Uh, 
we have a possibility of someone as our fiscal agent from the Waterloo Inner Cog, but that's up in the air. We have to make sure that NIAC uh, services will continue with us at least for the end of the year. So there'll be lots more coming on that. I uh, had a Mitchell County Board of Health meeting. Uh, Mark Ross, just for your information, will be gone the last week of June, but he'll be back in July to train somebody. Um, so he probably needs to pretty soon be getting something advertised as far as, you know, help. Because um, he hasn't actually given a date for quitting, but it sounds like it will be in July. Uh, they mentioned that the Amish, they have less at church, but they're still held inside. And uh, they did give them some sanitizers for that. Uh, let's see, they're, they're still having Monday and Thursdays at the um, Emergency Operations Center, two times a week meetings. Um, I have not been attending them because public health's been updating us every couple weeks. Uh, they're still having daily the drive through but it's just from 10 to 11 now at the um, Cedar River Complex. Uh, they have approximately two to three appointments a day, and public health says they probably average about 15 a week with testing. Uh, they gave body bags to the nursing homes. Um, we already knew three cases, two of those people are already recovered. And if the nurse, if someone asked if the nursing home had an outbreak, uh, did they need to announce that to people? And, and more or less, it sounds like if you have um, three or more, then they would have to uh, announce to the public that there was an outbreak. Uh, we have a tobacco grant that we always go after, but the state pulled back on it, so they'll wait and go after it next year. Hopefully it will be back. And they're predicting our, this was as of May 5th, so it changes all the time. They're predicting that our peak, it will be May 21st. And they talked about possibility of 15,000 deaths by August. Uh, Heartland Insurance, okay. Uh, we made a motion to set, um, Settled on a claims on a shoulder with $10,000. There was a fire at the Cedar um, County Transfer Station. Probably was a tractor trailer. Uh, we had 17 items that we had to do action on. We uh, left property. We had um, uh, moved to add $1 million to $2 million on... Um, uh, having to do with uh, cyber allocation because of it being so much more prevalent. Uh, let's see. Uh, Central Iowa Juvenile Detention, who we were not going to renew their contract with the group, um, they are having a very hard time finding insurance uh, due to corona. And so... Um, We'll be letting them on for a while, and we're, we will continue to try to help them find insurance. Uh, one place, Chickasaw County Conservation, we're taking kids to the Boundary Waters. Well, they will have to um, cover that themselves. That won't be covered under, the, under our group thing. Um, let's see, our chair, vice, and treasurer will be from... Steve from Cedar County and Jim from Decatur. Uh, we will have a $500 increase with Connor and Ash. That has to do with our audit. Um, that's actually, it decreased a little their hourly rate, um, but it, tends to always go back up a little wherever you're at. Keep in mind our budgets will be affected by late fees because of the corona. Uh,
We already discussed harassment. And uh, besides the Central Iowa Juvenile, we were also dropping the animal shelter. We had about 130000 extra in the budget, and that's going to be put towards that cybersecurity. And we'll still be within our budget. And as Judy said earlier, our mod factor took a dip. And there was a refund, though, from overestimating on a payroll refund. And I think that's all I've got. Yeah, I'm done. Okay, Stanley, I did not have a meeting. I had council governments yesterday, and we spent most of our time talking about uh, how we should approach uh, <clears throat> replacing Joe because Joe is going to be retiring at the end of the year oh. and uh, uh, what kind of a committee we wanted to set up or do we want to try to uh, uh, first advertise in-house or do we want to advertise statewide or do we want to advertise nationwide and so we had quite a discussion that uh, lasted uh, the discussion on just that part lasted over an hour and uh, uh, basically, our financials again, we are sitting in very good shape. Um, a lot of extra money has been coming into the COG because of the coronavirus. And uh, uh, matter of fact, uh, right now, uh, apparently, we are not charging for rides uh, because, again, uh, uh, the federal government is picking up uh, the tabs on that. But our ridership is way down, but uh, we are not charging for rides. Uh, then I had fair board last night, and uh, basically all they talked about is all the cancellations that uh, uh, were possibly taking place, and uh, they were worried about, uh, uh, again, uh, exposure of the uh, virus. I mean, could they have more than 250 people uh, in an event? Uh, uh, should they allow whatever? And uh, right now, uh, apparently the fair is still on. Uh, uh, some of the uh, things are going to be cut back. Uh, they have not decided yet whether or not to uh, totally cancel or, uh, but in any event, uh, uh, that was most of their discussion last night. And then uh, they had some issues with uh, the grounds that uh, they're having some uh, couple sinkhole problems and that, and they were uh, concerned that uh, they should get a dozer and that uh, uh, right now, uh, Basically, a lot of the private people are uh, tied up, and I suggested that county co or county secondary roads could bring their dozer up and do a little work for them, and that wouldn't. And apparently, we're going to do that. So that would be nice. Yeah, um, I, t I sent a couple of suggestions even to Dan Pop too of, of ways that they could maybe keep the fair open of. Even if their animals may be having every other stall and empty in between, um, uh, like their magic show, adding a bunch more um, seating so that people could spread out more. Yeah, that's, that's going to be a hard one for them, a lot of the things. I know I'm already concerned for July 4th, if they'll be able to do like the rodeo and stuff. I just can't even imagine how they do it. Awfully tough. Yeah, I, I, I don't know how they would. Yeah. So, okay. You can um, skip manure. Yes, let's go on to manure maintenance. You can skip that. Oh, skip it. Thank you. Okay. Do we have any public comments? Okay, we're going to call the meeting adjourned then.